Hello, welcome to the COVID Ethics Update. I'm Ryan Ferryhurt, Director of Membership and Ethics Education at the Center for Practical Bioethics. Today, I'm gonna to be discussing two separate articles, both addressing the question about allocation of resources during pandemics. The first one is called Fair Allocation of Scarce Medical Resources in the Time of COVID-19 by Emmanuel et al. And the other titled, Who Should Receive Life Support During a Public Emergency? Using Ethical Principles to Improve Allocation Decisions by Doug White et al. Both of these articles are an attempt to address the question, how can medical resources be allocated fairly during the COVID-19 pandemic? Emmanuel um, addresses this by creating four separate principles that he believes that when put into balance with each other are creating, will create a better system for allocating these resources. These principles being maximizing benefits of scarce resources, treating people equally, promoting and rewarding instructional value, and giving priority to those that are worse off. He believes that finding the balance, finding the ways of working with all these principles and upholding them would create a system that would promote fair allocation. Through the extensive article, he comes to final recommendations, and there are six of them, and I'm going to list them. There are one, in a pandemic, maximum benefit is important. This is a utilitarianistic principle of we want to do the most amount of good for the most amount of people. We have addressed this previously in other COVID ethics updates where we talk about the different ethical systems that are being used. And this one is settling in on in these situations, in dire times such as the COVID 19 pandemic, we want to maximize the most amount of benefit possible. Another is that critical COVID-19 interventions should go to healthcare workers. This is an idea that we need to protect the people who are out there doing the work for others. If we have all of our healthcare industry workers becoming sick and not able to perform those duties, it would promote more ungood for the rest of the society. The three is equal and similar patients should be created equally. He goes into the promotion of a lottery system. This would be two patients who are of the same social dynamics, um, all things considered, same critical decisions, need to be treated equally. Uh, we cannot have uh, one being prioritized over another for no real reason. Um, the best way to do this would be a lottery system, a fair random allocation, rather than what would become known as bedside rationing. The fourth is guidelines and priorities should be used for interventions and change with time. This is the, that as we're learning more and more, different recommendations, different policies, different approaches could be beneficial. The fifth would be uh, research participants who are agreeing to participate in these research should get priority later down. This would be if we are uh, doing research on a new treatment or a new therapy, those that agree to participate in that research should receive the benefit first whenever the next um, availability of resources comes available. And there's the sixth one is no difference in allocating resources between COVID-19 and other uh, medical uh, conditions. COVID-19 is a pandemic. We are seeing the negative effects of this, but that does not mean that other um, patients with other challenging medical complications requiring ventilation, requiring ICU rooms, should not be considered. We cannot prioritize COVID-19 patients over all others. They need to be considered on the same fairness level. In contrast to this, uh, Doug White et al. goes into four uh, broader ethical principles, the, those being a broad social value, instrumental value, maximizing life years, and a life cycle principle. Um, what this does is it creates an uh, algorithm and different variables, different uh, point systems are created for each of these separate principles. Uh, if we're talking, well, these go into comorbidities, age, and SOFA scores. Different patients with promoting a different principle would have a different point system used to determine which ones. And this ends in three recommendations, which principles should guide the allocation of maximizing the survival to discharge from the hospital, maximizing life years, and maximizing stages through life. 
The other uh, recommendation is the ethical permissibility to focus on instrumental value. These would be healthcare providers. And three, um, differently than Ezekiel, is that the public should be engaged in these allocation truths and strategies. Healthcare is a community organization that reflects the values and upholds the work of those communities. So we should make sure that if any system that we're having is going into place, that the community that that health system is serving is involved in these decisions. What these two um, different articles are attempting to achieve is to create a framework for allocation of resources. Frameworks are seen as more ethically permissible because they eliminate what is known as bedside rationing. If we have policies put in place where fairly distributed resources like patients are treated like, this eliminates the potential of personal biases and personal variables overriding what would be an application system uh, created. So first we need to establish principles, then we can create policies and algorithms that determine which of these to go forward. The difference between them is, uh, at least in my interpretation, is who these separate articles are talking to, who are their audience. The Emanuel article definitely comes across more administration and policy development. They're more specific to creating systems of writing the policy, where White seems to focus more on the front lines, more of the care providers, the physicians, the nurses, the social workers, the dietitians, who are actively engaging with these patients, trying to create these algorithms and use those algorithms. So I think while these two articles both focus on frameworks, they have a lot of shared characteristics of valuing healthcare workers, valuing maximizing the most amount of life as possible, and valuing the quality of that care that is going to be delivered to those patients. They do have different approaches and different audiences, but that doesn't mean that they can't work in harmony with each other, where the Emanuel article might be speaking to the administration and creating those policies in the larger context, we also have the white article, which could be more support for the frontline uh, providers who are putting these policies into practice. And I think that while we are creating these triage policies and doing this work right now in this very challenging time, we cannot rely on a single resource. We cannot rely on a single approach, a single idea, a single ethical system. What we need to have is more of an amalgamation of all this work. Um, if there is anything that is being as good about this current crisis is it's the demonstrated value of how all the different healthcare providers come together and how we all can work together on providing for this. This pandemic has really focused the medical industry in a single goal and there's a lot of resource allocation conversations but there's also a lot of resources being shared across communities and being shared across um, healthcare workers, where we're seeing that we are not separate individuals, we are seeing ourselves as one larger society and global society who is facing this pandemic and we need to face this together. So if you're a healthcare worker or if you're interested in reading how these policies are uh, made, I would recommend reading these articles and understanding kind of the philosophical and ethical principles that are going into the development of these policies so we can have a better idea of engaging with them in a more ethically sound manner. So today uh, we talked about the different ethics systems, the different policies that are going into place and how guiding principles can be valuable while we try to create better triage policies and scarce resource allocation policies. So thanks for tuning in to the COVID ethics update from the Center for Practical Bioethics. Until next time, this is Ryan Ferdinand.